Welcome to the podcast, Greg. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, it's been a while. I haven't seen you in like, uh, I don't know. Like Since the pandemic. Jeez. I know. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Yep. Um, so I don't know. Have you ever watched one of my podcast episodes? Uh, I haven't seen th- this particular podcast. I've watched the uh, the book club quite a few times because yeah, yeah, I've read a quite one. a few of those books that you guys had suggested. But uh, so for yeah. for those of you that don't know, Greg is um, he's a personal trainer. Um, I've been working with him in uh, a local uh, gym for I don't know five six years. Yeah, like. Uh, Almost seven. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, man. Uh, man, your workouts are like amongst the hardest. So yeah, I'm ruthless thanks, sometimes. Thanks for the push. <laughs> you really welcome. appreciate it. And what we do on this channel is we usually talk about sales skills. Mm-hmm. We talk about accounting, finances, and you're kind of a, an odd uh, guest to have on the show because you're a personal trainer. But I think that you know, for anybody that's in the sales industry, anybody that has to do with the public, mm-hmm. any entrepreneur, I think they'll get a massive boost if they can get their health level, um, you know, higher up. To so, that next level, right? To that next level. Yeah. I, for myself, you know, I know that when my workout routine is on point, when my, um, when my diet or nutrition is on point, I've got a lot more energy, a lot more get up and go and a lot more creativity. So that's why I wanted to, to have you on the show and talk about that. I mean, you've got a lot of clients that are in the sales industry, right? Yeah, like ultimately uh, quite a few people that I work with are realtors, uh, mortgage specialists. I have a few people who work in real estate law, mm-hmm. uh, others who are entrepreneurial. Um, ultimately, a lot of the people that I do happen to work with, like you're, you're almost always on, right? Mm-hmm. So whether you have a typical nine to five job or if you are working as a real estate agent, uh, you know, a client might give you a call or mm-hmm. shoot you a text or an email any any hour of the day, right? Yeah. So I find exercise in general, and it doesn't have to be the most intense thing, just getting moving, um, not only makes you a little bit you know, sharper, you feel more confident, you feel better, more creative as you already elaborated on. Like, yeah it just makes better for better decision making, right? So when that email comes in at like 9.30 p.m., if you're not a person who's active, you, you might feel a bit more lethargic. You might be exhausted by the end of the day, but you know, if, if you're somebody who is active, typically you have a little bit more gas in the tank yeah. that much later in the day. I teach my clients not to have their phone on past 9, 9 p.m. <laughs> so funny that he actually meant that you mentioned that, but I've been actually trying to practice that a little bit more myself. Yeah. So I see clients as late as 8 or 9 p.m. sometimes. Yeah. But as soon as the day is over, it gets either oh, plugged in upstairs yeah, or if emails thing. or things do happen to come in, I tag them at the top of my to-do list for the following morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll get up a little bit earlier because I have more energy of because course. I exercise frequently, eat well, and look after myself. So I can get up that 30 minutes earlier than usual and actually just answer those emails in the morning. And you know, you set the tone for your day, but you also don't set an unrealistic expectation from your clients too. Cause if you're always answering, yeah, you know, that might burn you out. That's, that's one of the, the things that we talk a lot um, about on this channel is time blocking mm-hmm. stuff in, you know, um, whether that's your journaling in the morning, the time you get up every morning, because we're in an industry in the real estate sales industry where some days we might not have an appointment until 11 Mm -hmm. a.m. so we could sleep in you know and that's i don't know what your thoughts are on that but i think that when i've got a routine that's set Mm -hmm. i'm a lot more um productive rather than you know getting up at at different times every single day Mm -hmm. i like to get up at the same time so it's funny that you mentioned that though so like my new business mantra uh so i've been uh an entrepreneur now for quite some time like working as an independent contractor at a local gym in ottawa but now being a business owner i decided to focus on you know accountability consistency dedication Mm -hmm. those are the three main pillars to like my new business model and you're right you know whether you have an appointment at 11 or you have an appointment at nine, if you follow the same routine on a daily basis, whether you you know get up and you start your journaling, you get up, you have a good breakfast, if you stay consistent to your current routine and try not to break from that, um, I find that leads to better success. And that's not necessarily just in exercise or healthy living, but like in business as well. Everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In your opinion, do you think it's better for people 
in our industry, because we're mostly talking to real estate agents, to work out early in the morning or should they leave it? I think it's so funny morning. that you mentioned that. So I have a whole side of the business that's online sales, right? So I just work with people through text messaging, emails, and the occasional Zoom call. Okay. And I always ask them what their goals are. So it depends on what your goals are. If you're looking to build muscle mass, typically I would say you know later in the day, afternoon, evening, or even at night, depending on what your schedule looks like, because by then you've had more time to actually ingest more calories, your nervous system's a little bit more awake. Yeah. So you're less likely to get injured lifting heavier weights to build that, you know, that larger physique, that more aesthetic look. Whereas if you're looking just to live a better lifestyle and you're looking to burn a bit of fat and you know thin out fasted cardio, I'm sure a lot of us in the industry have heard about that, right? Yeah, yeah. Getting up and just getting moving, doing- Before eating. Yes, like before eating or even minimal food in your belly. Uh, that's more um, inclined to actually weight loss, right? Gotcha. So I'd say it depends on what your goals are and ultimately what your schedule looks like too. Like, you know, if you're forcing yourself to get up too early to squeeze in a workout, yes, um, that's potentially harmful as well. Like it's important to listen to your body. So you had mentioned, um, you know, you could sleep into 11. Yeah. If your body needs it, of sleep course. until 11, you know, listen to your body. It sounds so cliche, but it's something that we often neglect. Yes. Like I have a harder time taking a break from working out than actually working out, which is the opposite problem most people have. Cause it's your routine. It's my routine. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, ah, this elbow is achy or I have like mild tension in my neck or this or that. I'm like, instead of working out today, you know, I'll do some stretching and just rest. Yes. Cause that's equally as important. <laughs> yeah. I gotcha. But a lot of people forget. <laughs> for, for me, it's always been, um, it's been more successful to get my workouts in early in the mm -hmm. morning. That's why I would see you often at 6 a.m. Yep. Um, early in the morning because in our industry, when the phone rings and a client wants to see a house or you're at a listing appointment and you've got a 2 p.m. with the trainer and then your listing appointment goes yep. like 90 minutes too long, uh, well, 30 minutes too long, We've been 90 minutes too long also. But. I've seen that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, that's why I recommend to my uh, coaching clients, at least, you know, if working out is a priority for them, I try to encourage them to get it early in the, the morning. Well, less things can come up, right? Exactly. Because on a daily basis, you have no idea what's going to happen between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Like, yeah, yeah. There could be that's a whole right. plethora of things that, you know, calls, emails, uh, urgent appointments that just pop up. Yeah. So again, like to do full circle, depending on what your goals are, exactly. a lot of people who are getting into their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, ultimately a lot of people just want to live you know, a better life, right? You want to feel more confident, you want to look better, you want to feel better. Not many people are necessarily looking to max out their deadlift at 500 pounds. Exactly. So if that's the case, yeah, a lot of your agents probably could benefit from just getting it out of the way, like, you know, seven, eight, six a.m. and just Early make sure- in the morning. Exactly. But, um, have you ever read the book Spark? Um, many years ago, yes. That's I, good. I enjoyed it. It was a little bit too scientific for me. It is. I like the uh, I like the practical side of things yes. more than the theoretical. Yes. But I, I get the gist of it. So working out can like do wonders for your brain. Oh, yeah. For your capacity to you know solve problems and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And if if you guys haven't read it, uh, pick it up. And uh, we also have an, an episode on our book club. Oh, on Spark? I think it was your recommendation. It was. Yeah, yeah. I recommended it to uh, Chris, actually. Yes. Yep. And uh, it's amazing. Like some of the, the schools that are implementing, you know, hard um, courses after the gym class and keeping the, the students' heart rate up for 10 minutes or more, mm -hmm. like those students are performing better than the people that aren't working out, the students that aren't working out. Well, yeah, without going into too much of the science, but ultimately if you have stronger circulatory system, right? Like more yeah. blood flow through the brain, you have faster, faster like synapses in the brain, right? Yeah. So then basically you're able to have creative thinking easier, problem solving easier, conflict resolution, it all becomes easier. So if you're losing out on multiple offers for your buyers, Maybe you should have worked out that You should have started exercising. <laughs> you have exercise out. your brain, exercise your body. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So that's good. Um, obviously, uh, in the past year, like the world has changed a lot. Yeah, drastically. So um, working out is not the same as it was. And you know, how has it changed for, for people you know, pre-pandemic versus now? Uh, how, 
have you seen some people, I'm sure you have, mm-hmm. dro- drop off the wagon? Yes. And have you seen some people win and how are they winning? Mm-hmm. So I've seen both yeah. uh, and I'll throw myself in there too. Like, so the, I had never been laid off in my life oh, prior geez. to last year. And that's where, you know, without exercise, I started like, you know, eating more, having more alcoholic beverages, things like that. And then I just didn't feel like myself, you know? So that's, that's the, a prime example of a loss. But within the first month, basically sleeping more, not feeling like myself, turn that all around mm-hmm. with more exercise, right? Because that was part of my routine for the last, since I was 17 years old, I'm gonna be 33 this year. And it's always kept me, you know, pointed in the right direction. It's been my arrow. And I see that with a lot of my clients as well. So we weren't sure what was gonna happen in the state of the world from last March to when gyms actually reopened by August. And now they're closed again. And now they're closed again. We right? are in, what are we, midnight. The, what yeah, middle of May, probably 15th? 17th lockdown, I think, yeah, at this yeah. point. No. 17 out of 20, uh, uh, hopefully. Um, but yeah, no, I've seen quite a few losses and quite a few wins. A lot of people, you know, they didn't want to get so bogged down with the state of the world. And that's quite a few of my clients now that, you know, people had the opportunity to still work out yeah. from home uh, or with like myself at my business. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're so much further ahead than those that said like, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen in the world, the pandemic, I feel depressed, I feel this. They let their emotions kind of get the best of them, which is easier said than done. It's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you. Yeah. Um, but like you said, sticking to like a routine um, Does a is, lot. is so important for our mental health, which is another side of this whole pandemic that hasn't been talked about enough, in my opinion. But exercise has such a strong correlation to like, you know, feeling good about yourself and putting yourself in the right mindset, which is directly linked to, you know, better family dynamic, <clears throat> better friendships, better business business decision making, all yeah. that stuff, right? Um, so it's been it's been interesting, like the the pivot that like this whole industry of fitness had to do, like these conventional gyms, I, I really don't see them surviving. It's gonna be yeah. It's going to be tough for them, especially uh, the ones that don't have the bank accounts to support the rental payments mm-hmm. on the places that they're renting. Yep. Hopefully they own the area that the, that they're running the gym out of. Well, we saw one of our like beloved like staples of Ottawa like close down the OAC gym, right? Like that's been that's you right. know, a staple here for 45 years almost. Yes. But their overhead, I could only imagine what yeah, that, that would a, be monthly that was a big building so you you'd expect that places like that would unfortunately probably go under whereas i see maybe more of the future yeah a lot of at home you know virtual training or custom plans for people to follow yeah uh but also like smaller spaces like my space is my business is done through my home like my whole basement's renovated into a private studio it's probably a better quality of service that the client will get in the no distractions yeah. one-on-one training some spouses do train together as well but that's, um, that's awesome man. it's it's uh in my in my opinion it's a better quality service than you, what you'd get at a larger gym where you, you're just a number yeah and uh some of these gyms they do offer you know bigger equipment bigger better scarier things but um you just don't know who's using the equipment you don't know if it's been cleaned. You don't know this. You don't know that. And I can see why people are reluctant to go back to gyms right now. Yeah. So I see a lot of those uh, outside working stations that they're uh, they're pretty. Uh, they're busy. building up everywhere. Yeah, that's pretty. I have cool. one around my the corner of my house. You have one by your place. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, just bars outside. Yep. Um, what's that word when you don't have weights? Uh, like more like calisthenics or like f- free weight. Uh, so not free weight, body weight workouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can do a lot of interesting things with that. Like uh, one of my favorite style of workouts is HIT style training, right? So like um, high intensity interval training. Yes. But a lot of people think it's like, oh, how much weight can I like snatch up or clean or squat? And honestly, I prefer doing HIT style training, body weight. Yeah. Because all those speed, 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 get max heart rate. I remember reps. When, um, when you were working at that, that gym that we used to you were working at and mm-hmm. I was a, a, a member before, like the hardest classes were the body weight classes. Yes. I hated those. Everyone hated them, <laughs> but people still thanked me leaving them because they felt like they worked their butts off, right? Seriously. And because there's very minimal breaks. Yes. So there's a contrast from lifting heavy and a contrast the going full-fledged, like as fast as you can go with just your body weight, right? Mm-hmm. 
So I find it's, it's important to do a good mix of both to challenge your body in very different ways, even on a weekly or you know monthly basis, yeah. right? So that's why I think it's really important to actually switch up how you train as often as you as often as you can. Yeah. Stick to a plan for a little bit, then change it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to change the time in which you work out. You can stick to the 6 a.m. But then, you know, for the month of May, maybe go a little bit heavier, build up some stronger, more uh, performance-based muscles, and then challenge those new built muscles in the month of June by doing nothing but like hit style training. Yeah. And, you know, definitely mix in some foam rolling and stretching. Your body's <laughs> gonna feel pretty sore. Yeah. But I think it's important to switch things up. And you can do that almost anywhere. So if somebody were to, to say, okay, I don't know when these lockdowns are going to end and I want to equip myself yeah. for uh, a home gym mm -hmm. and they've got a budget of 250 bucks. What would you recommend that they buy? Well, nowadays 250 doesn't get you much. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> gym equipment's more precious than gold, but ultimately yeah. uh, I don't think you need much more than a pair of resistance bands yeah. and some loop bands that you can put around your thighs. What are, what are those? Uh, so you can buy these, like you can buy them rubberized. I prefer the cloth ones. They're easier to clean okay. and they have much stronger integrity. Okay. Uh, but they're like loop bands. You can put them around um, like your ankles or around your thighs, but you can do, you know, lateral shuffle walk. You can do uh, banded glute bridges. You can do banded hip thrusts. Yeah. You can do banded squats. There's tons of different things that can target the aesthetics of your lower extremities by using those. And then the like resistance bands, you don't even need handles. Yeah. You can just buy like the ones you can use for stretching. You can do curls with them. That's what you I do. Kneeling, yeah. you can do overhead press with them. Uh, you can do pull aparts that targets your back. If you put both feet on and go wide enough, you can do bent over rows. Yeah. You can be quite creative. Yeah. yeah. With just bands. And, and those aren't that expensive. No, bands are relatively, like you can probably buy uh, three different tensions uh, for like the resistance bands and probably three different tensions with the loop bands for probably between 100 and 150. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. Like a, a foam roller and a mat. I would definitely, okay, that is essential. A foam roller and a yoga mat <laughs> would be essential because you definitely need to stretch out those sore muscles after the fact. <laughs> That's, I don't have one of those. I've got the resistance bands like early in the uh, lockdowns, mm -hmm. uh, like for 40 bucks. Yep. And they're great. Oh yeah. They're like, they're hard, man. Like, uh, well, you can, tough. you can get ones up to like 50 to 60 pounds of tension. That's or quite you, a bit of tension. <laughs> or you combine them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the... The toughest one, like I can't even curl. Like it's. I have one at my house as well. I have to use it for rows around the dumbbell rack because there's no way I'm going to be able to move it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're they're pretty good. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, you also put together a uh, a home workout for anybody who wants to work out from home. Yes. Right. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll create a link. Okay. But maybe tell people a bit more about that workout. Yeah. So. Um using my memory here, so that's always a little tough. But ultimately, the way that the workout is actually set up, yeah. um, so it should take about 20, 25 minutes, because I know a lot of people are living a very busy lifestyle right now. So I gear this towards a lot of like people in your industry, realtors, this housing market's nuts, this it's point, crazy. <laughs> let alone enough time to breathe. But you know, let's focus on trying to get a workout in, right? So the way that's set up is that um, basically there's a movement preparation part. So that's what is a fancy way of saying stretching but it's active stretching. We're gonna okay. be targeting some of the larger muscles and larger joints. So by the time you get into your warm up and your workout, far less uh, chance of injury. Mm -hmm. And you're also starting to warm up those joints as well. Yeah. So it starts off with that. We target the back, target the hips, target the shoulders. Then we jump into a warm up. So the warm up, I like to target a little bit of everything because you wanna be able to target the core, the legs and the upper body. So it's a good mix. From what I recall, there's some jumping jacks. There's an exercise called a dead bug, which is a very good breathing uh, technique exercise yeah. that also targets your midsection and a bit of coordination because you have to move the opposite leg and opposite arm. <laughs> and it's it's three different workouts, right? Uh, it's three different parts. Three this different is, parts? Okay. Yep. So you could just do this at home. Oh yeah, you three, can do it like times. three or four times a week. It targets yeah. a little bit of everything. And uh, what makes it interesting, I would strongly suggest timing yourself. How long does it take you to finish all of it? Because as much as you're exercising, you want to work on efficiency. Yes. So I set the workout to five rounds, but I would like you to be working out for roughly 30 minutes. So okay. if you can finish six rounds in 30 minutes or even seven or eight, it just shows that your cardiovascular system and your recovery has gone better. Yeah. So if you try the same workout, even for like one, two, three weeks in a row, I made sure it was a little bit of everything. 
So you're gonna be working upper body, lower body, core, you're moving sideways, you're moving up and down, you're moving back and forth. You're what do you call those? Everything. Like a Tabatas or? Uh, Tabata is typically like a martial arts based um, interval training. Yeah. Uh, this guy is just the more, it's like an AMRAP. AMRAP. As many That's rounds right as possible. Um, so I basically mixed in a little bit of a short rest period at the end of each round, but some people may not even require it. Yeah. You just put it in just to listen to your body. If you yeah. need 30 seconds, take 30 seconds. If you don't, go right back to it. So by, I know you don't have it in front of you, but you say people should be doing like five rounds in 25 minutes? Ideally, yes. I think each round should take under a minute, approximately. Uh, the most the most lengthy part is probably the movement preparation. Because I just want to make sure that you're moving properly by the time you start doing you know, push-ups or sprawls yeah. or, or lunges. You'd even be surprised how many people I see do lunges and they're like, that's perfect, right? Your knee collapsed in, your arch is falling, this is happening. <laughs> so it's important to actually like warm up the knees and lower extremities before you start pumping out a thousand squats, right? So I'll put a link <laughs> for you guys in uh, the description of this video, just so you can get access to that workout. I'll put your information cool, I appreciate in, that. That, uh, yeah. in that download also, because you do online uh, Yeah, I do. Um, I basically do virtual personal training as well. And I do uh, online uh, custom plans. So I have clients who reach out and they're like, hey, you know, uh, this is my schedule. These are my goals. This is the equipment I have at home. Yeah. And then I basically put that in a mixing bowl, stir yeah. it all up, give them back their plan. And then I follow up with them uh, either through Zoom calls or uh, emails uh, three times a week just to keep them consistent. I know that everybody can benefit from having a personal trainer, mm -hmm. but I can say that for people that haven't built that habit yet mm -hmm. of, of going and working out, it's especially useful to have a personal trainer that, Very helpful. that you have an appointment with. Because as opposed to you saying, ah, screw it, I'll just uh, you know watch another episode of uh, The Ozarks. Mm -hmm. You've got an appointment. Great show. <laughs> yeah, great show. You've got an appointment with your personal trainer at such and such a time. So you need to show up for that appointment. And, and do you work out with people uh, on the Zoom calls or? Uh, well, I typically just watch and correct and stuff. Yes, I don't work yes, out yes. with them. But yes. uh, it's funny that you actually even mentioned that though. It's when people are like, oh, I don't, I don't have enough time. I yeah. never have enough time. But it's weird how we always have enough time for one more episode yeah. of our favorite show. True. Um, but yeah, it's super important, especially when you're getting started. If you're starting from nothing, and you want to get into a healthier lifestyle and start exercising, even if it's only for a few sessions, I, whether it's with me or another like valued trainer out there, yeah. I strongly recommend working with somebody for a few sessions just to kind of understand the basis of, you know, proper nutrition, yes. how to fuel your body adequately, right? A lot of people that I talk to, they under eat or they don't, they don't, they space out their eating so much. I'm like, oh, so you're doing intermittent fasting. They're like, what's that? Yeah. So it's important to get a handle on nutrition. It's, a good, it's important to get a handle on, you know, a lot of, there's a myths out there. If you lift heavy, you're gonna get bulky. Yeah. Do I look that bulky? I do a lot of strength training, but in order to get bulky, you need a higher caloric intake. Okay. So this is a lot of myths that I find working with a trainer, even for like the first month to kind of get the ball rolling would really help, you know, kibosh all those negative like thoughts yeah. and ideas and set you up on a path for greater success. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, nutrition is one of those things that it's like- It's a big one. Super easy and it's super complicated. It's very simple and you know, it's hard to, to pull off. Yeah. Be yeah. Do you train people on, on how to eat also? Is yes. that a, so a I have, of So I am a certified nutritionist. I'm not gonna put myself out there and say like, yeah, I'm a holistic nutritionist yeah. or I'm a dietitian. By no stretch of the imagination am I that. But I'm really good at helping people kind of dictate how many grams of protein that they should have, roughly how many grams of carbs, roughly how much fat they need. Yeah. Every body's a little different, but I basically can break it down to like what each of those macronutrients is useful for. Yes. And a lot of people I work with, like they don't get enough protein in. They work their butts off in these workouts and they do 10,000 plus steps a day and this and that, they're always active. Yet I'm like, okay, you're a 200 pound man and you're only putting in 80 grams of protein a day. I'm like, have you ever thought about supplementation? Like where, where are you getting your protein sources from? They're like, oh, I thought that was enough. Not even close. Really? So a lot of people, I think when they're looking to live a healthier lifestyle or yeah. especially when they're looking to burn fat, they think that less is more. It's not always the case. Sometimes more is actually better. Really? <laughs> yeah. Cause I always thought that, you know, 
if you're in a cal calorie deficit and you're trying to mm -hmm. uh, lose weight that you're actually winning but you're, you're saying it might yes, be and no. yes and no uh, so calorie deficit 100 percent. that'll actually lead to weight loss okay. but if you do too large of a deficit your body will eventually adjust and make that your new set point so how so. much how many calories should a so it depends on how much you want to lose, but ultimately, let's just say your body requires on a daily basis 2,500 calories. Okay. Just to start for the first like few weeks when you're trying a weight loss journey, <laughs> I typically recommend no more than 300 calorie deficit. Okay. So you're losing a large snack or a very small meal throughout okay. the day. That's it. So you're still taking in like uh, 2,200. Roughly, yes. And if you're doing intermittent fasting, which is, is popular these days, mm -hmm. Which is uh, which is great, by the way. It works for a lot of people. I really like it, mm -hmm. just because it like uh, it shortens your 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 eating window, mm -hmm. which makes it easier to be reasonable. Yes, it's like, oh, I'm passing by the Tim Hortons. I really want to drive. Oh no, it's too late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, and it's um, so for those of you that don't know what intermittent fasting is, it, it's it's a, a period of the day that you're fasting and a period of the day that you're eating, mm -hmm. right? So you've got the 12 12 and the 14 yes yeah, some 10. people are doing the 8 and 16 that's uh that's a good window 8 and 16 is that the best one is that i think that's what a lot of people aim for is that yeah. they have an eight hour eating window and a 16 hour fast yeah and uh it helps a lot of people who have you know issues with impulse control it's funny that you like mentioned that i said the timmy's thing yeah. but a lot of people you know at night people get bored they they eat bored Yes. So if you have a set window, let's say 12 to 8, and you can't eat past 8 o'clock, it eliminates a lot of that like late night snacking where you're just trying to yeah. legitimately fill your mouth because you're bored, right? And that's the rule number one. Like you don't, you don't stop at the coffee shop on the way to work nope. to have anything else but nope. a black coffee with mm -hmm. zero calories. There's no, there's no temptation to put in one sugar or two sugars because you can't have it. You're not supposed to have exactly. it. So for me, it really, really helped. And um, just planning out meals is another thing that mm -hmm. really, really helped me. Yeah, meal prep makes a big difference. I find it's very helpful to set aside like two days of the week. Yeah. And let's say it's a Wednesday night or a Sunday night and you're gonna make the same meal and you're gonna hammer out, like grill like six chicken breasts. Yeah. You're gonna grill all your veggies, all that stuff. And you don't, it eliminates the thinking, that's right? True. So that's the problem where a lot of people are like, what am I gonna make for dinner? What am I gonna have for lunch? What am I gonna do? And it's just a lot easier to pick up the phone, make a phone call and order something in that may not be the best for you. Uh, yeah. Whereas if you already have it in the fridge and you yep. just pop it in the microwave. Uber Eats. And it's pretty it's, convenient, skip the dishes. And then it's a competition <laughs> of which food looks best and you know. Yeah. The stuff that's not super healthy always looks best. They look, <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's what it like entices you to order it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But yeah, like the intermittent fasting can be great for a lot of people. It helps with their insulin regulation as well. Yeah. And if you have your insulin production like regulated, there's typically less inflammation in your body, and that's what causes you know sore joints. Uh, sometimes it causes bloating. Other times it causes well worse effects. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, you know you might be more likely to get sick. Yeah, so yeah, if you yeah. actually have all this under control, starting with your diet and gut health, then you're probably going to feel better. I've experimented with the even 24 hour fasts and I've heard about that. <laughs> and, uh, the mental clarity that I get after a 24 hour fast, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. Like you're sharper and, um, Georges St. Pierre, uh, a UFC yes. fighter. Oh yes. I he, remember he talks a lot about this mm -hmm. and, um, uh, he says, would you rather be a hungry lion or a, uh, a lion who's just eaten, right? You want to be a hungry lion. You want to be, um, you want to have your senses turned on mm -hmm. and you want to be you know, hungry for that, for that hunt. Yeah. It's like you're dialed to 10. Exactly. Right? You're sharper, you're faster, you're like uh, more witty. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So for me, that made a, a big difference. And uh, I just love the idea of, of fasting. Have you ever experienced with that? I've tried a little bit of everything. I've yeah. tried keto, I've tried paleo, I've tried intermittent fasting, yeah. high carb diet, low carb diet. I like to try a, like a little bit of everything. So I have a leg to stand on when I'm trying to actually coach a client to go in one direction versus the other. Yeah. Um, for me right now, I'm just on, I'm doing like the flex diet. Yes. So I, I did the little air quotes there. Just essentially the flex diet is as long as you're able to reach what your body requires in, you know, protein, carbs, and fats, 
you can get it from different sources. Okay. Um, so I'll be completely transparent here. I don't have the cleanest diet right now. Okay. Um, but, but you look super healthy. Well, it's because like for the most part, it is quite good. I'd yeah. say like 80% of my diet is quite good. That 20%, I actually, you know, I will have that. Of course. At, I will order in that pizza or yeah, I will yeah. have that glass of wine with uh, my pasta or whatever it might be. You know, I, I find life is a little bit too short to always... You have to enjoy life. Yeah, you have to indulge a little bit. Yes. Uh, what I tell a lot of clients, celebrate the small victories. Yeah. And it's going to sound so cliche, but ultimately, if you're, your major focus is to drop 20 pounds, and we do a check-in every two weeks to see where you're at, and you're progressively losing, progressively losing, but you're, you really want that one chocolate bar, one chocolate bar is not going to derail you. Now, holding back until the very, very end, and you're like, I hit my goal weight, I feel great, and then you go back to your old lifestyle habits, that will derail you. Yes. Right? Yes, so yes, if you yes. indulge and have that one chocolate bar, you're not going to limp up and gain 20 pounds are you um have you have you read the four hour body no i have not tim ferris no so tim has a um, you know he talks about all the stuff that we talked about today but he says he forces himself and his students to plan on having a cheat day you should because it limits the temptation mm -hmm. for those other days mm -hmm. because if you know that sunday is your cheat day when you're faced with a cupcake on Wednesday <laughs> afternoon by your colleague, yes. you're like, "Sorry, I can't today." But you know, uh, Wednesday, I'll, uh, Sunday, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll spoil myself. You know? But I also find like it's important to find like it doesn't necessarily have to be the same day all the time, right? A client of mine actually brought this to my attention a few months ago, and I mm -hmm. thought it was like it was mind blowing. I don't know why. Everyone looks forward to the weekend, right? Yes. Friday comes, I'm going to have my three beers, I'm going to order in this, I'm going to have Chinese food, I'm going to do this, whatever. How about Mondays? Monday's yeah. the hardest day. Yeah, true. We all go back to work after the weekend. Yeah. We're all tired. It's, you know, often catching up on emails, yeah, yeah, yeah. all these things. So why not have a nice glass of wine Monday night? Yeah, yeah. Or order in Monday night. You know, it doesn't it doesn't mean that you're, you're setting yourself for failure yeah. for the week. It just means that... You know, ultimately, you're trying to celebrate the small thing and make Monday less horrible. That's <laughs> and I was like, that's life hack. Like, that's a genius. Life hack right there. Boom. Yeah, like, thank yeah. you. So I shared that with quite a few people ever since I heard that. I like it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> make Mondays fun. <laughs> well, listen, man, thank you so much for uh, for coming in. I, I know that the students watching this channel definitely got a lot of, out of uh, this mm -hmm. conversation. I definitely did. Um, I'll put a link to that workout. Wonderful. And what's the, uh, is there a place where people can reach you? Is it Instagram? What yeah, so uh, actually my website's going live on Monday. So um, this will be live tomorrow. So okay, wonderful. Three days. Um, so my business name is uh, Greg Oliver Fitness. Uh, okay. Go Fitness for short, which is wonderful that I have those initials. <laughs> Um, but you can find me on Instagram at Greg Oliver Fitness, uh, Facebook at Go Fitness, and uh, the website should be uh, up and running at uh, gofitness.ottawa.ca uh, come Monday. Good. Yeah, awesome, man. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming by, man, and uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you in a gym sometime soon. Well, hopefully very soon after Hope the lockdown. And <laughs> hopefully soon. Yeah. Cool. Cool, man.